Hey everybody, this is the second part of the video on fraction models, language, and symbols. And uh, it's important that we are careful about the language we use with fractions and that we help kids um, understand the language, get practice with it, and, uh, and make meaning out of the words that we use. Some of the most important words that we'll think about with fractions are the whole and what the whole all about, the denominator, and the numerator. So it's really important that uh, we're always paying attention to what one whole is when we're talking about fractions. For, for example, if I say, um, would you prefer to have one half of a pizza or one quarter of a pizza? And, uh, and you would say, well, of course, one half, right? It's more pizza. But if we have different sized holes, for example, you have a tiny personal pan pizza and you can have half of that, or you can have the uh, you know super extra large jumbo pizza and have one quarter of that, well now the one quarter is looking like a lot more pizza, right? So it's the, it's the whole that's, uh, that comes down to be very, very important as we think about fractions. And so talking about what is the whole and paying attention to the whole is an important thing for kids. Also understanding what the denominator and the numerator are for fractions is very important. So if I look at it, for example, a one-half, what does the one mean and what does the two mean, which is which? The denominator is the bottom number, and this tells us the number of equal-sized parts that each hole is partitioned into. So for example, if I'm looking at the pizza again, that tells me that this pizza is cut into two equal parts. The numerator is the one on top, of course, and that's the number of equal sized parts that we have or we're paying attention to. So one half means one of those two equal sized parts, and that's why one half is what it is. Uh, that might seem really common sense and second nature to you, but it, for kids, it's uh, as they're learning about fractions, this is something new and important for them. And, uh, and it also is easy to not pay very close attention to what one and two are uh, in this context and to think about them more as whole numbers instead of as part of a fraction. And so two, they think there's two somethings, but they don't know exactly what those two things are, the two parts. We can help kids learn this language and get comfortable with the meaning of these things by iterating with them. In other words, counting fractional parts. For example, if I took a, well, we'll stick with pizzas here. If I took a pizza, cut it into eight parts, and we say, okay, kids, this pizza is now cut into eighths. And eighths, that's, that's talking about the denominator. That's the number of parts. And I say, let's count how many eighths we have together here. One eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths, eight eighths. Going through that counting with them, now we're no longer counting whole numbers, we're counting fractional parts. And they hear over and over again, hey, the numerator, the one on top, that's telling us the counting number. The denominator is telling us what's being counted. It's telling us the size of those parts that we're counting every time. So this iterating can help kids learn the language and learn the meaning behind the language. A couple of things to avoid when you're using fraction language. Avoid saying A over B. For example, if I have this fraction here, don't call that 3 over 4 don't call it three out of four. We want to name the denominator as the part, so we want to say three-fourths. Also avoid the word improper fraction. You might remember using that for things like, um, like five-fourths and saying, ooh, that's improper. That tends to make kids think there's something wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with five-fourths. It simply means we have five of these parts that are the size of a fourth each. And uh, it's just an old-fashioned term that we really don't need to use much anymore. Getting into the symbols a little bit that we started writing down. Um, a over B, of course, where A is the numerator and B is the denominator. And those are very common way to write it. But it, and it seems pretty straightforward to us, but it's actually a very complicated thing because it captures many meanings. It captures the part-whole relationship. It, it also refers to division. For example, three-fourths is um, related to if I would take three things and try to split them among four people, how much would they each get? They each get three-fourths. Related to measurement, we can think about fractions and as operator, and of course a ratio, for example, three to four. So this can be a very complicated thing. As you work with kids, you need to help them make connections to the models and the language. So write down the symbols a lot as you talk about them, and avoid changing and using things like three-fourths. Instead, stick with one.